talk about glow root and diagnosing problems is that I mean glow root only gives you part of the part of the solution all right if you're troubleshooting trying to find out particular issues there there's actually three places you need to be looking right you need to be looking looking at the application itself and glow root's a good way to look at it you need to be looking at the database what's happening on the database again moonin gives you a very good idea of what your basic database health is looking like but the other thing is the proxy right your proxy is creating um access logs and the proxy access logs are full of very very important information both for kind of generating reports at the end of the day tracking down particular trouble spots and often you need to look both at your access log file on the one hand and what your glow root is telling you on the other hand and trying to to correlate those things to get a full picture of what's going on so let's talk a little bit about the access log um there's a default access log and in addition to the default access log i've created a slightly modified access log um and it's modified basically in two ways i want to modify it a little bit further in fact but at the moment it's modified in two ways um first of all instead of the standard apache common log format as they form, as they call it it's actually the same thing that nginx we also use it the apache common log format uh, which is space separated um i've made it tab separated like mine you can see here so there's the ip address these two i think that would be the username if you're using basic auth which is something else i can't remember that's the timestamp on the request um this is the request itself, get Povax 503, that's the error code. 299, that's the number of bits returns. Um, this is the, the, what do they call the referrer, right? The page which the request has come from. This is the user agent, where well, we've been talking about the user agent string. So this is, this, this request is actually coming from an uptime robot, as you can see. And this last number here, this is the request time. Okay, so I modified the default format to produce this alternative format, uh, which is tab separated instead instead of sep space separated. It's just easier to process that way, um, and um, includes the request time, how long the request took. This slide on Apache, the request time by default comes out in microseconds. In Nginx, I think the request time is in milliseconds. You need to remember that when you're processing files. Um, one of the reasons for doing this is that this, this format is much faster and easier to parse than parsing the default format. Um, because you don't see tabs anywhere else except between fields, it's a much better field delimiter to use. Um, and one of the tools that's best used for processing data that's in columns, um, besides Excel or putting them into a database, which you can also do. Um, in fact, I've done it myself, I must confess. Uh, you can take the log file in this format and you can load it up, read it into Excel and, and pivot around on things and have fun. Um, but the... The real tool of choice, I guess, for dealing with column column data like this in in the Unix world, at least, is using something called ORC. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with grep. Grep is grep is um, one of the command line tools that's great for searching through log files for things. ORC is kind of a little bit like grep on steroids, right? It can do everything that grep can do, but also quite a bit more particularly when your data is nicely sliced up into columns like this. Got this little quote off the, off the internet that um, it's a bit pithy, but it's very true. I think the, the real reason for learning all the fact is to have an excuse to read this very, very nice book, right? It's, it's not, not new, 
That orc's been around for a while. The Cain orc is from, from Richard Kernigan, one of the authors of the C language. Written in 1988, the orc programming language. It's very, very easy to read. And in fact, you only need to, the first 50 pages, right? The first 50 pages teaches you pretty much most things that you need to know um, to process files in, in, in orc. I'm going to give you like a couple of examples here of looking at a looking at an actual log file and how you can use orc to make your process of investigating it a little bit more flexible maybe before we do that i'll just show you the book if you don't learn anything else from this academy if you come away from it having learned 10 pages worth of orc you have benefited hugely I suppose the book is very old now, it's out of copyright. I think that's the link there. Thank you to a very famous orc programming book written by these three fellows here. Um, it, I'll take it down a little bit. Yeah, read the first chapter. Read the first chapter. That'll probably teach you most of what you need to know in the first in the first ten in the first ten pages. Right? The book itself is not very long. It's about 160 pages. Um that explains to you the very basics of orc. It's much better than any of the odd tutorials and things that you find out there on the internet. Um go to the go to the original orc book. But let me just show you a few things to motivate. So we'll spend a little bit of time looking at this log, log file and maybe leave, I don't know, 15 minutes at the end to take any questions people might have in particular reference to the assignment that you all have coming up. Okay, so let's look at a log file first. I put one in the tab here. Morton, I hope you don't mind this. Or I hope people in Lao don't mind. This is an old log file that I actually have from Lao. Doesn't have any identifiable information in it. And we're not going to look in great detail in the log file anyway. I'm just using it as an example. Um, so the log file here, perf.log, right? You'll find this under etc. Apache 2, or no, under var logs, Apache 2, perf.log. Um, you can create exactly the same format also with Nginx. Um, so it's not Apache specific. Uh, the first thing is how to look at a compressed log file. Well, I mean, this comes back a little bit to my talk on databases the other day. I mean, one thing we could do, we could just zip the log file like that. But I, I don't know this. The problem with doing that is I'm just going to unzip what's potentially a very large file onto my disk and as you know from from two weeks back i hate unzipping large things onto my disk unnecessarily and there's no need to unzip it onto the disk because gzip is a nice format it's quite different to zip in the sense that it's 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 a stream compression rather than a zip is kind of a, a combination of compression and packaging right it's used for you can zip a number of files together whereas gzip simply takes a stream and and compresses it so you can decompress the stream you know, on the fly without necessarily writing anything to the file system normally when you're looking at a text file you'll cat it but if it's a compressed text file if you z cat it it's gonna dump it um i don't really want to dump it this is a pattern you'll see often we slow it down. Whatever we do, let's pipe it into less, and then we'll see it a couple of lines at a time. There, so we can see inside the compressed file. We don't have to unzip it onto the file system. Wouldn't make much of a difference in this case because it's not a very big file, but sometimes these files are quite enormous. And okay, so this is an example of the, the perf log format similar to what you've seen on the slide. Basically, you've got all of those fields, they're tab separated. So what are the kind of things that we can do with all? We can take the output 
the Z cat, the grint orc. And one of the first things that we want to do is tell orc what the field separator is done. Yeah. Because by default, orc is going to assume that the field separator is a space. So we have to tell it the field separator is a tab. Um, and then we write a little orc program. Now here's the simplest orc program we can write. Um, we write an orc program to print out the line. Print dollar zero, dollar zero basically is going to print the whole line. So this is an orc program that does nothing at all, really. It's going to take the take the output of the perf log and simply print it out again. Right? So that's not very exciting. It's just got us back to where we were. We can take advantage now of the fact that orc understands that this data is arranged in columns. Right? So it knows dollar zero is a sort of special special column identifier that refers to the whole line. But if I just, I know that my IP addresses are in dollar one. Let's print just dollar one. Now you're seeing I'm pulling all the IP addresses out of the file. Um, this in itself can be a useful thing to do um, if you want to find out how many unique IP addresses have accessed your server. I don't know if we have any Unix gurus on here want to volunteer the best way to do that. Basically what I would do, I would use all like this to cut the, cut the, the first field out. Um, I can then type that into sort. That sort will take quite a long time because there's quite a lot of quite a lot of IP addresses in here, I think. So let's wait a little bit. Sort is very quick. Sort is very quick. And there you can see we've sorted the IP addresses. So this, this, this 18 is a busy one. There's 101. Okay, so just taking that off, put, putting them into sort allows me to arrange them all in order. Having arranged them all in order, I can then use this little program called Unique. Unique will now get rid of all the duplicates. Let's leave what we have left there. And now we've got unique, all the unique IP addresses um, arranged in order. We don't need them arranged. The only reason we need them arranged in order is so that we could remove duplicates with unique. And now we can take that further and count the number of lines. WC, WC stands for word counts. Word count takes some options. Word count minus L will count the lines. Um, so that little pipeline there, little pipeline there is going to tell us that on this server for the log file for that day, there was 833 unique IP addresses. Um, that's just one little development, I guess, from here. We can use orc to pull out a particular column, right? So this column was pulling out IP addresses. Um, looking at some of the other columns is interesting as well. I, I, uh, sometimes I have to keep going back and looking at the file itself. Let's count them. So number one was the IP address. Number two is the time date stamp. That's this, that, this one. Number three, four. Number five is the request. Number five is the request. Number six will be the re will be the response code. So I might want to do something like um, six of the response code. Seven, eight looks like it's the um, let's print the and see. Let's look at five and six. If we just look at field number five and six. That's going to show us the request and the response, right? Um, one of the things that I mean, 
this is now like sort of one step beyond the very simplest orc. Very simplest orc prints out the whole line. Take it a little step further, and we can pick out particular columns to print out. But we might only be interested in in requests for um, events, for example. We might want to pick out everything to do with DHIS API events. Now we know we can do this with Gref, but we don't need to use Gref because we can also do it like this. You can put a button in here. I'm going to have to escape these. And now, basically, I'm only going to be pulling out all the requests for API events um, and their response codes. Fortunately, this server looks quite healthy. Oh, we're all getting lots of 200 response codes. Looking at the response codes itself is an interesting thing to do. Um, the response codes are... Um, um, Six response codes are six. Uh, a, a good indicator of that your server is performing well is if it's responding to most requests with a 200 or a 300, but not 400s and not 500s. Right, so it can be useful to look at your your log file and find out how many, what kind of errors you're getting. Um, I got a nice little. This is now more complicated little. Oh, oh my God, I run this one quite frequently. Let me get it up to it. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got it here. Let's take this one and examine this in a little bit of detail. Actually, we we'll save that one. That one's more complicated. Let's do a slightly simpler one first. Um, remember, I did say that we have. I'm just going to remove the filter for the moment. We have a field we've added on to the default format. I think it's field number 10. Let's just whack it on here, which is the request time. As you can see this is, this is a request time. We've actually converted the request time into seconds. Um, Now, I might be interested in just the slow requests. All these requests that we can see here are actually, are actually being handled very quickly. If I'm interested in all the requests which take less than a second or less than five seconds, they may be the ones that um, I actually want to investigate further. You can put, a again, a pattern to match the front here, either a regular expression pattern like we did earlier, a regular expression pattern you use what you put between, between slashes like that but you can also put a numeric condition so i want to say show me all the lines in my log where the request processing time was greater than 10 seconds do we have any of those i wonder we wish we don't but probably we do yeah we have quite a few look at these this was an example where um, there was obviously a lot of trouble going on with API events um, and API me in there also for well, this must have been to do with that must have been to do with some kind of blocking I think but anyway you can see here that we can filter out as we we're now looking at all the requests which have taken longer than longer than 10 seconds to execute um, Ah, why don't we sort them? Let's sort them and then we can look at that. Find out what our top running requests are. Sorting them again, just like before. I can take the output of that line. Let's make it a bit simpler. Um, not really interested for the moment in the response code. So just the, <coughs> the time and the request itself. Uh, Yep, so there's the first field and the second field. 
Let's flip it around. No, don't flip it around. Keep it where it is. No, flip it around. I want to get. Let's put time on the front. Let's look at the request time and the request itself. Okay, we've seen the time along the front. It's just a little bit easier to sort this way. Let's sort those. Oh, now we get an idea of. Oops, push it into less. Uh, sort, sort, sort them. Um, Get a, few, get a few switches on sort, sort them numerically and sort them in reverse. Okay, put them upside down. Let's look at the long ones first and make sure they're treated. Oh, there we can see there's some horrible ones. 200 seconds. Whoa. This was a server that was suffering. I think many of you have been in a position where you're looking at servers which are suffering. Possibly this was a case where needed to do some rate limiting or something else. Ah, you can see, I can see the problem in this straight away. This thing is using skip paging. Uh, this thing is using skip paging equals true. What's that about? It's not saying paging equals false. Oh, it's skip paging equals true. Morton. Is that a bad thing? Usually I see paging equals true or paging equals false. Skip paging, I'm not too sure what that means in the API. Anyway, here we can see just with a with a very quick little one line at awk, we have pulled out the request time and the request and sorted them in order so you're seeing your very longest requests here and it's fairly obvious looking at this server that if you're going to look anywhere for where it's suffering or where it's in need of some attention it's on api tracked entity instances right and these are get requests on api tracked and and, and posts as well um oops, problem with that one Interestingly enough. Uh, and events, right? So there's a number of 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 um, URLs here which are resulting in long delays. Some of these are possibly effects rather than causes because the server perhaps is being completely overwhelmed, in which case it's becoming very slow responding to anything. But yeah. Oh, gives you a way of basically doing two things very simply. One is to match lines in your log file. For example, there's a numeric match, the other kind of matching we've seen, we can do a regular expression match. Um, and the other thing that it allows you to do is to, is to refer to the different fields of your log as dollar one, dollar two, dollar three, etc. As I say, that allows you to do quite a lot of interesting things. Book itself, if you read the book, um, is a lot more than that, right? It's a lot more than just matching and printing lines. Though probably this is eighty percent of what you use Orc for most of the time. It's just like a more sophisticated way of doing it than just using grep. Um, but it can do much more. The 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 structure of a orc program, if you like, actually is in three parts. There's a begin section, and then there's this section here, which um, is match a match an expression and then do something on the line. And then there's an end section. Uh, and I've got a little example here that I've somewhere in my history makes use of all of those sections. Let's see. Up and see if I can find it again. It's what I was going to show you the first time. Let's do grip or um, yeah, it's here. This is this is quite a nice example of using or a little bit more, a little bit more functionality of all. And seeing it is almost like more of programming language um, 
Okay, can I try to explain this one for you? Um, first of all, I do a Z catch because I've got a compressed log file. Um, okay, so I'm going to Z cat my log file into awk. Um, my awk is going to count events. For some reason, I can't remember why I was running this initially, but I basically want to look at what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find out what the result of putting two events are. How many are resulting in a 200, in a 300, in a 500? Um, so basically, I'm filtering here on API events. And then for each line matches API events, right? For each line, I create a variable here called status. It's actually uh, what's called, I guess, an associative an array where I'm taking the dollar six, which you might remember dollar six is the status code. So that'll be 200, 201, 404, 429, whatever it might be. So I'm creating an associative array called status and incrementing uh, the count for each status code that's coming in. And then I'm gonna end the block to my awk program which will just run through that associative array and print out the values of them all. Basically, what this does fairly quickly, I hope, is run through all of my puts to API events and tell me how they all ended up. All right, so I got two 408s, I got 69 401s. 166, 302s, quite, this shows my the rate limiter was at work here, right? 28,000 requests got results rate limited, but in the process, 371,000 requests actually got through. This kind of little orc break, this little breakdown is very useful if you're, if you decided to implement rate limiting and you want to know what effect it's having, right? Um, this gives you a very quick, easy indication. You can see most of the requests are getting through, some of them are getting rate limited. Um, what you might find if there was no rate limiting, and I, I seem to remember in this case exactly what was happening. If there was no rate limiting at all, then uh, the number of 200s was actually much less than that, but we were getting more errors, right? More 503s or more. Um, I can't even remember what all the error codes were. Uh, so it's quite hard to get this kind of information easily and visually, but you can see here, it's quite a simple little one liner really that um, pulls the information line by line out of the log file, um, puts them into an array and then just loops through the array and prints out the results. Learning, learning orc is good for your health, particularly if you're looking at log files. Um, as I say, you could do all of this in an Excel spreadsheet, but I'd have it done in orc before you've even got your spreadsheet up and running. The other advantage of doing it in orc, of course, is that it now lends itself to being scripted. You could run this as a cron job every morning, right? So you can have a look in the, in the morning what the um performance has been like during the day um yep as i say the best way to learn orc is to read the first 10 pages of that little book um rather than listening to me giving you little examples um i gotta ex i'm gonna put some of my examples up here so that you can look at them i'm gonna put them onto the onto the um resources channel on Slack 